Hi guys and welcome to another video. In today's video, I think we're going to be doing a first for the channel and that is a video of me abroad. I don't think I've actually done a video of me abroad due to the dreaded C word and how long this channel has been going for. And I was very excited to leave the country. Now the country that we visited was Belgium and in particular, we went to the city of Antwerp. I think this video is gonna be a bit of a mix between kind of a camera orientated video and a little bit of a travel guide. So I'm gonna go through everything that we did and share all of the photos that I took along the way. Now I personally, always find one of the hardest things about going away, especially on a trip like this, which is quite important, is deciding what cameras to take. Now I had whittled it down already to the X100V or the X-Pro3, but I was really struggling to decide between the two. So I decided to stick a poll up on Instagram and move the decision to somebody else. And whilst that poll was up and live, and the X-Pro3 taking an early lead, I realized that I actually wanted to take the X100V. And that's because of this, which is a little ProMist filter, and my wide angle converter. I decided that I'd actually quite like to give these a bit of a go and use them in a bit of force. I've kind of used them, but not kind of properly, if you know what I mean. Thankfully, the X100V did overtake the X-Pro3 on the poll, so nobody was disappointed, and that was the camera I ended up taking. So this video is gonna feature lots of photos taken on the X100V and a combination of the wide angle converter and the ProMist filter as well. So kicking off day one then, we decided to take the ferry across. I always find if you get the ferry, it's really hard not to just head outside and get some quick snaps. And almost straight away in these photos, you can see that ProMist taking effect. Once we arrived in Antwerp, it was around lunchtime, so we headed to find some food. And by food, I mean we were just looking for an excuse to drink some beer. If you've never been to Belgium or drunk Belgium beer, the drinking culture is a little bit different than it is here in the UK. There's definitely a focus on quality over quantity and the alcohol content is an awful lot higher, typically kind of seven, eight, nine percent, rather than your three and four percent that we're used to here in the UK. And I actually really enjoy this kind of more, almost wine-like approach to drinking in Belgium. The place that we headed to was actually called Beer Central, and we ended up coming here a few times throughout the trip. They have something like 500 different types of bottled beer and something like 30 on tap. After we'd got some food, we then headed and checked into the hotel and we were exceptionally lucky with the hotel. We got like a 12th floor view and the room itself was amazing. But the views out the window, you could see things like the train station and it was really hard again, not to just want to snap some photos. And whilst we spent quite a bit of time in the room in the evenings, I just experimented a little bit. So we've got night photos, day photos, and me just plain messing around to be honest. It was getting pretty late at this point, so we headed out and got some food. And this was the first time that I really tried this ProMist filter out in the dark. And going around Antwerp at night, there's lots of neon lights and kind of like bright highlights that you can find in your image. And you're either gonna love or hate this filter, but I actually really like how it looks. I think maybe I've got the one quarter filter, maybe the one eighth filter, just kind of dialing it back just a little bit, might come out with some slightly better results. Maybe it's slightly overkill, but I honestly love some of these images and they're some of the favorite images that I got from the entire trip. Nearly by complete accident, we found ourselves heading into the train station quite late in the evening. And we'd previously seen the train station from the other side. And if you've never been to Antwerp and know nothing about it, the train station weirdly is their number one attraction on TripAdvisor. And we'd seen it earlier and thought it looked nice, but probably hadn't understood why it was number one. And it turns out it was actually in the wrong part. We found ourselves in the main part of the train station, like the main entrance, and it's literally like Hogwarts in there. And being kind of 10, 11 o'clock at night, there was almost nobody in there too. It felt like we had the place to ourselves, and I can see now why it is number one on TripAdvisor. The next morning, we woke up and was keen to find ourselves the best coffee we could find, so we were looking for this coffee shop called Caff Nation. Now on the way, we actually went through a little park called Stadspark and it was actually really pretty there. There was lots of cherry blossom and we couldn't help but stop and take a couple portraits. I would probably go and hunt this park down now that I know it's there. It's definitely worth a stop. It's quite pretty, especially early in the morning like when we were there, there was barely anybody about other than the occasional runner. Caff Nation, when we did get there, probably had the best coffee of the trip. It seems like coffees in Antwerp in general are just very small much smaller than what you would typically get here in the UK. Still a shot of coffee, just a little bit less milk. 
The cake we had there was also really good. I think it was lemon and poppy seed. What we then did from here was we took a bit of a walk into the main square, like the main market area, as we wanted to kind of get our bearings a little bit. Now when we got there, it was very busy. At this point, it was probably 10, 11 o'clock. There's also like these like land trains that take tourists around and they have no problems just parking up in front of you at all. So we kind of vowed to each other that we would get up a little bit earlier in the morning the next day and head there as quickly as we could to try and get some pictures and we'll see them a little bit more later on. Our first real booking of the trip then was a trip over to a museum. The museum is called Andy Stroom. I probably butchered it, but I'll put it up on the screen as well. The actual museum itself felt like there was nothing that special about it. It was interesting to get a bit of a history of Antwerp, but one of the important things is you can, for free, and you don't have to pay for this, go all the way up to the top and get a really good viewpoint of the city. And here's some of those images now. What we then did was took a, what felt like a very long walk from what was essentially like the north of Antwerp all the way down to the south for a brewery tour. Now this brewery tour was so so good and you get a bit just as you turn up you then take a bit of a kind of self-guided tour around the brewery you then pour yourself a beer during the middle of the trip and then when you get to the end they've got a really good bar area where they have actually pretty cheap beers and we did like a little taster so we had kind of three beers each and it gives you a pretty good way of tasting lots of different beer without getting too drunk. It would probably be a little bit better if you get a chance to come here on a weekday. You would see people actively working in the brewery and seeing it all in action. So next up then, day three, we woke up a little bit earlier, found ourselves a coffee quick, and then headed into the main square. This gave us a bit of an opportunity to get some of the photos that we just couldn't get the day before, and it was definitely worth it. We felt like we was only here kind of 30 minutes earlier than the day before, but it was far, far quieter. Now, probably my highlight of the trip, we took a little walk over to a museum called the Plantin Moretus Museum. This was a print house 300 years ago, and it was one of the very, very first places that took printing seriously and therefore made books and things on a massive scale. Now, what I probably didn't understand going in, but definitely understand now I've left, is kind of the amount of responsibility they had. And they found themselves in a bit of a moral dilemma at times where religions and politics both wanted to mass produce things so they could kind of reach a massive audience. Now what probably interested me more was the scientific side. Now for the first time ever if you did an experiment that was noteworthy you could quickly get this published and into the hands of everybody across Europe and during this period there was a really big spike in scientific discoveries as people were just able to share information far quicker. It also has a really cool courtyard just outside in the kind of main square of the building where you can get some really nice photos as well. This was by far my highlight of the trip and if you're in the area I would highly recommend that you take a visit. We then headed to one of the more unusual attractions which is a tunnel that goes underneath the river in Antwerp and it's called the Saint Anna Tunnel. It was made in 1933 and it still has the original kind of wooden escalators that make for some really nice photos but the tunnel itself is dead straight and if you take a photo it kind of goes all the way to a vanishing point. We took a bit of a walk along it to get on the other side of the river. I'd recommend doing it because when you come up the other side you can get some quite good views of Antwerp the city itself and we then found ourselves kind of around the evening time looking for some food and we'd actually pre-booked this meal on day one as we'd seen that it was pretty hard to book food on that main square so we went to somewhere called the meat factory where we had a steak. The steak was so good and the view was even better. Some of these photos are just taken from the table and our view of the main square with the sun setting. The very, very last thing that we did on this day just after eating was heading back to the river that I was talking about earlier where we went to the tunnel. Staying on the kind of Antwerp side of the river with the sun setting kind of out on the horizon was really, really nice. And there's lots of people kind of gather there just to have a drink and just to chill out in an evening. And I'd recommend doing it. Just being able to watch the sun drop behind the horizon was really, really nice. And it again, ended up with some pretty good photos. Then heading into day four, the very final day, we actually left Antwerp pretty early in the morning so I could get out of the city before the traffic built up. And we headed over to Bruges. I'd been there before, Claire hadn't, so I gave her a bit of a whistle stop tour around the town and to be honest, ended up with some of my favorite photos from the trips. It's a really, really photogenic place. You've probably heard about it and seen pictures before, but if you've not been, I recommend definitely stopping here for a day or two if you've not been. The images alone make it worth the visit. I think we should probably do then to finish off this video is actually loop back around to this guy. I still stand by the fact that the X100V is one of the best cameras you can buy for an everyday carry. This was pretty much the only camera that I used on the entire trip. 
This camera is an absolute gem, especially when you combine it with the wide angle and that ProMist filter. I've not really spoke much about the wide angle converter. Pretty much every image in this video was taken using it. And other than it being a 28 mil, there's almost nothing else to say about it. The quality is exceptional. You, you can't tell the difference optically from the first from the 35 and the 28. This, this guy performs exactly how you'd want it to and it gives you that 28 mil. I personally prefer a 28 mil focal length over a 35. So I think I'm gonna find myself using both the filter and this wide angle converter an awful lot more in the future. If you've enjoyed this video though guys, please, please do not forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more videos like this coming. I've also picked up another camera that is exceptionally similar to the X100V and I'll be releasing a video on that in the next few weeks. Be interested to get your thoughts when that one drops, but thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.